Hi everybody, this is another TFR drums video and this video is going to be my first video and my first flight of my um, Reptile Affit X450 okay and the reason I purchased this quad is because this quad is going to be my night flyer so I'm going to mostly I'm going to fly it at night time but today I'm going to do a line of sight flight just to see uh, what kind of flying time I'm going to get with the battery that I'm using right now so that way I can set up the timer on my radio to work with what this battery is going to give me okay so let me just start you know describing you know the different features on this quad and the stuff that I installed into the frame okay uh, this quad from the factory I they come with two with two types of um, FPV cameras um, they got one version that costs like $65 that come with like a, a, a value price you know FPV camera I think it's like a 520 TVL but I'm not sure about it and the second one is this one that I got here that costs uh, like a hundred dollars this frame comes with a 700 uh, TVL camera like the one that I got over here okay so it's like a better quality uh, uh, high resolution uh, camera um, the nice thing about this uh, particular frame is that they give you like a simple uh, one axis uh, gimbal operated by, by one servo so that allows you to look down forward or up and I really like that it's really cool you know uh, it's nothing complicated like dealing with a brushless gimbal or anything I mean I'm still gonna down the road get a brushless gimbal another quad with a brushless gimbal but for nighttime I don't care about having a brushless gimbal uh, one thing nice about this gimbal is uh, um, it got you know like a uh, foam take so it will on on this structure of the gimbal over here so it's designed to absorb the vibration from the rest of the aircraft so that's really cool now uh, one thing is that this camera is not the only camera that I got here I got a second camera over here that's this one here and this one is a sub micro uh, low light sensitive uh, camera so, uh, so I got a camera switch uh, it's, it cannot be seen but it's back there so I got this one and this one so I can switch between cameras but also this is not the only, the only two cameras that I got on this aircraft I got another one in the back as you can see over here so this camera is another low light sensitive so micro camera and the only difference this one is uh, mounted uh, this one comes with 55 degree lenses and the one in the front comes with 90 degree lenses so that's the biggest difference but when it comes to the spec I think it's like 0 0.008 both then on on uh, low light sensitivity now um, I live in the US and over here we operate with um, NTCS but this quad you know one thing that I didn't like it came with a camera that's PAL and it's not like you got like a manual or something that you can switch it to NTCS so if you want to use more than one camera on this aircraft make sure that the other cameras that you put that also PAL because the problem is the inside the video the the, the camera switch that is also connected to OSD when you switch to a camera that is designed to work on one format to another camera that works in a different format that just confuse the OSD so it's not so you have to make sure that all the cameras they are PAL okay um, the OSD that I got over here is an old school OSD and it's hidden right on top of the NASA the NASA is right there I got a NASA light and I got a little top plate that came with this aircraft they're supposed to go on the top over here you decide to use like a uh, one of these KK flight controllers CC3D or whatever and you can use it as a flight controller protector but also you can put it down here as long as you provide yourself with the standups to allow you to mount you know accessories on top of the NASA so I got here um, Cyclops uh, CE OSD and you can see this the antenna of the OSD right here this is the reset switch for it and it gives me you know many of the basic features that you normally get with the OSD but also 
one nice thing that I can do with this OSD is like you can plug into the receiver and if you wish you can turn the OSD off. It's not that OSD is going to reset itself or anything because the OSD is going to keep you know track with the uh, stacks according to what the GPS get the information the GPS get so all you have to do is just flip the switch and you will go back to the screen so just pretty much to turn off the OSD feature but the OSD is still working and still getting information um, but also that switch allows you to switch to two kinds of OSD screens it shows you the first one it looks like a kind of like a fighting jet screen that like the one you will see on uh, the HUD of, uh, of a fighting jet the other one is like a more simple one that it shows all the information in the bottom so you will get the whole screen you know clean and then the third feature will be you know turn turning off the the screen of the OSD so uh, that's something that this OSD does not like okay uh, I got LED lights over here and these LED lights I got I got in different colors so in the front I put white on both sides of the aircraft I put blue and in the rear I put uh, red you know so I mean you got the colors of the American flag but also um, the white ones you know as a headlights the red one as a tail lights and the blue one so I can see you know the sides of the aircraft okay and one nice thing about the LED light is that I set up them in a way that I can I put a switch that I can disconnect it to my remote control so the switch allows me to turn on and off the LED lights and that's another cool feature with it okay um, the receiver that I got here is the high-tech Optima 9 since I'm using a high-tech Aurora 9 right there and he got this only um, Optima receiver that comes with diversity antennas so I got two antennas on each side so why this um, I use like an antenna tool for the RC car and I heat it I, I mount it with zip ties on the frame and then I hit it on the borders of the frame and I bend it down so in that way when the aircraft you can see when the aircraft is in the air the antennas they're gonna be constantly exposed regardless of which angle you know the, the aircraft is looking at you know so it's not gonna be obstructed by the this tiny landing gears or anything so I'm gonna get maximum reception from the radio. Uh, this thing is kind of the same idea of the bunny rabbit style of antennas that people got on those uh, UHF systems, but they normally they put in the back and they are like really high. But I say, you know what, there's no point for me to do that. I'd rather just put it the way I did it here because it's, it's more safer. It's not gonna be uh, exposed to the props and all those antennas, they collapse or something, they can hit the prop over here. There's no risk and I still get the diversity functionality of this receiver, okay? Um, let's talk about the motors and ESCs and props. I got the DJI E300 system and this one got the self tightening uh, uh, props so you can just remove if you want to. Oh, and, and when you put them they just self time because the motors are spinning out of the other direction with the propeller tight so you can see I got two props that they got the black uh, dot in the top and two that they are uh, the silver ones so that lets you know um, in which direction the, the thread spins and supposedly I'm not 100% sure but this type of motors and ESC is similar to why it comes on the Phantom 2 and the Phantom 2 with this system using a 5200 uh, battery flights for and I talk about the Phantom 2 vision it flights for like 20 minutes so I wonder if I'm gonna get you know a great flying time with this 4000 because I believe this aircraft even is bigger in diameter I believe it's lighter than the Phantom 2 vision so you know I should be able to do a decent flying time with this um, the ESCs that come with this, and this is the, the, the weird part, but they are 15 amps. And normally on a 2212 motor, I would use like 20 to 30 amps. So, I mean, I guess they know what they're doing. They say 15 amps is good for it. I'm just going to take the word for it. Um, I, I don't see why they're not going to, you know, take the power of the motors. Uh, one nice thing about this system is when you 
budget system, you don't have to be worried about balancing anything. The, supposedly, the motors and the props, they are balanced from the factory. One thing that you guys have to remember, this thing is not designed to work on 4S. So if you guys are one, if you guys are one of these uh, 4S freaks that like to put 4S on everything, not with this. Not with this. The ESCs would take 4S, but the motors, they, this ESC with the motors that they got, it won't take the 4S. So don't even try to put 4S over here. Uh, right here, I got a little uh, loss alarm that also I can switch it on and off from the receiver, from the radio. You know, in case that if I fall into the grass, tall grass or something like that place, it's hard to find. As long as the battery doesn't get disconnected, I can, you know, uh, transmit uh, um, here, you know, this loud loss alarm. There's as loud as a uh, smoke alarm on your uh, house kitchen. Um, the video transmitter that I'm using, since I'm using uh, the Foxtech uh, video goggles, I got a Foxtech 1000 mini watt uh, video transmitter, 5.8 gigahertz with a um, clover leaf. And this clover leaf that I got is the one from uh, Quad Frames that, that I made in, in Poland. Okay, so. One thing that I want to uh, detail about this aircraft is that the, the radio on the receiver is 9 channel. And I need 6 channels to work with the NASA. So I only got 3 channels left for accessories. But I got more than 3 accessories. I got 5 accessories. Okay, One accessory is the servo, the gimbal for the servo the, um, to operate the gimbal. The other one is the uh, loss alarm, the camera switch to switch to the three cameras, the OSD screen switch. So because of that, probably you guys might wonder, you know, how I managed to, you know, get five devices uh, to work or five accessories to work with only three channels left. And I also forgot the other switch, the other uh, accessories, the switch for the LED lights. So what I did is that, for example, the switch that controls the screen switch on the on the OSD is hooked up together with the loss alarm. So the functionality of one won't affect the other. All it's gonna do is every time I flip that switch, the loss alarm, of course, is gonna go off and uh, the, the screen on the OSD is gonna change to a different screen. But the thing is, it works in, sequ in sequence. So every time I flip the switch, it goes to um, a, a fighting jet mode, to simple mode, to uh, a screen off, and then goes back to uh, a fighting jet mode. That, that's the default screen on the OSD. And every time I do that, the loss alarm is gonna go off. But at least, you know, like I said, the functionality doesn't affect one with the other. The gimbal is the only accessory that I got connected by itself that is, doesn't share the functionality with anything else. So the the, 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 the switch that I use for the gimbal is on its own. Now the switch for the camera, I, I put it together with the switch for the LED lights. So what I did is like when I use the main camera that is on camera, that is camera one, the LED lights won't work. Now when I switch to either this camera or the rear view camera since they are night night vision cam I mean not night vision like uh, uh, um, like uh, infrared but they are like um, low light sensitive uh, cameras. When I switch to either this one or the real one then the LED lights will turn on. So it, 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 it's like it makes sense you know the way I, I set it up so I, I managed to to take advantage of uh, be able to, you know, squeeze, you know, two extra channels out of a nine channel receiver. I wish I had a radio that had more uh, channels, but I'm happier with the high tech than, than uh, um, that because of the features and functionalities that I get. I'd rather have that than have a radio with more channels, but without the features that I get with this radio. Okay, so I guess, uh, I pretty much explain everything before I finish. I got over here the power distribution board that comes with the E300 system. 
and I like it because it's just really it's, it's round and it's smaller than the normal power distribution board. So for to mount it, you can either put it with double side tape or you can use a screw and a nut and just, and just screw into the frame. So I put it in the back of the frame over here. So and it's really nice, you know. I had enough uh, 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 area on this uh, to connect all the, the the cables and wires that would power the ESCs and all the other accessories on this frame. Okay, so I'm gonna proceed to go to the fill and do the first flight. Okay, I just uh, connect the aircraft into to the battery. Yeah, just waiting for the aircraft to acquire the satellites. But one thing that I gotta do is I gotta make sure uh, the this cable is out of the way. The I don't want this cable to start moving like crazy and hit the hit the prop. I don't need I don't need a air disaster over here. And so okay, I believe it's secure right now. Uh, I already got satellites. Now one thing that I want to check. Is it the video transmitter is working right? So I got this DBR over here. It's the DBO one from Foxtech, and this DBR comes with his own built-in uh, video receiver, 5.8. Okay, I forgot to take the lens cap of the main camera over here. So take it off. Now I got an image. Hey, okay, yeah. Now I got an image right now. Okay, I got the camera switch. Like I said, it's connected together with the uh, with the uh, uh, the light switch. So now I got the lights on, as you can see there. And now the night vision camera is is the one that's working. And now this is the rear view camera. Also got the lights on. All right. It's this uh, working property, you know. So they just uh, go back to their main camera. So I'm gonna turn this thing off. Now the this switch here is the one for the lipo alarm and to switch the I mean not the lipo alarm, the loss alarm. But also switch. switch also the screens on the OSD. I, I got satellites and everything so let's take off. Actually before I do that I want to see if the OSD acquired the satellites since the OSD the, the GPS antenna on the OSD is right next to wow unbelievable I got two satellites right away I'm impressed Okay, it's, uh, okay, it's reset. Okay, cool. It's working fine. So, let's go and proceed to fly the aircraft. I'm going to put in GPS now and see if it stays. It's a little bit of breeze coming from behind me, but hey, just stay there. You just quiet his position, lock it, and it's right there. It's not moving. I just turn on the LED lights. Turn it off. Good. They really like the way this aircraft is flying. I know, like I said in many of my videos, oh, the train's making noise. I know that much of a line of sight pilot, so I hate to fly a line of sight. And the problem with this aircraft is that it's not that easy to figure it out. You know, where's the front, where's the back? I got it right now looking at me. Yeah. 
the wind is pushing the aircraft back but the GPS is uh, fighting to keep the aircraft in position so you can see you can see the camera there you can control the camera with a with this switch over here so now the camera is looking down now it's looking forward now it's looking up so that's how I'm gonna be able to control it right now because this uh, like a constant breeze they just don't stop the aircraft's fighting you know the GPS fighting to keep the aircraft in position it's not like it's that windy or anything it's probably like five miles per hour but it's just like it's constant it's just don't it's not going away now you can see the the cool feature about me mounting the antennas the way I did it so you can see that I'm completely and totally exposed all the time to the radio so it's more efficient to have it that way then put it the way you know and looking up you know it will do the same job so that's a really cool thing that I did it that way one thing that I did too with this is the magnetic magnetic uh, declination with this aircraft so I point the antenna to the GPS antenna where, where I live over here uh, the magnetic north is minus 13 degrees so that's like around 11 o'clock the little arrow so I'm pointing at 11 o'clock just like I did with all my other aircraft that have the NASA and that's why it's uh, the GPS working property now I'm gonna go to attitude there are a little bit of attitude fly it's amazing it's like a bunch of birds over here and they just don't care so one thing I'm gonna try to do now is the return to home so let me just flip the switch okay now that Christ going up he's supposed to land over there on that floor mat my car floor mat right there so It's like around 70 feet or 60 meters in the air I mean 20 meters in the air and he's supposed to come down slowly I would have let it land but as you can see it rained yesterday it's wet all over the place so I'm almost sure that he's not gonna quite land on the on the spot so Okay, so I just regain control of the aircraft. I cancel the return to home, but at least I know they work correctly. What I like about this system is so quiet. I got a going over seven minutes of flying time now, and the voltage is 10, 10.7 volts. So like I said, one thing that I'm impressed about the system is how quiet it is. You know, the these uh, propellers that this aircraft got, they are really strong. I already saw a guy that he crashed a 450 that got the same system. And he was flying over the, he was flying like over the, the you know, on, on the street. And he made a list, uh, mistake and he land too hard. And you can hear the propellers, you know, like hitting the ground. And for what I saw in the video, they didn't broke. So that's really nice, you know. That, and they're really light. You know, they look like the APC MR props. They even got the same color and everything. But the propeller itself is lighter. You know, compared to the APC, it's really thinner too. So I guess that somehow helped out the motor rev up more happy. So that's really nice.
Now what I'm gonna do is one one thing that I heard a guy complaining about this is that they claim that this system got no 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 power. You know, and it's the same guy that said that he crashed his aircraft at the end of the video. So he was going like full throttle to see how fast he climbed and then he was, you know, bringing the aircraft down. So I'm not gonna go full throttle but I'm gonna go let me just send it away a little bit. And now Yeah. I guess it's not because of power. It doesn't have the same punch like you're using like a Sony Sky motor. Even this aircraft that I got is not that, that, that heavy. This aircraft is like 1200, uh, I mean 1400 grams uh, with everything that I got over here. Uh, well, I'm going to try the same thing again, but now I'm going to do it on full throttle. And probably the, the light pole on my radio might go off. Yeah, it's not really that powerful for what I see, but you know what? I don't really care about that. If I get a decent flying time with this, I'm not gonna care that much about, you know, the climbing power of this thing. I mean, this thing is not a hot rod. This thing is not gonna be a sports car. All I'm gonna do is just fly um, around and that's it, especially at night time. So probably uh, tonight, if the weather allows, I'm gonna fly around town. And I don't like to fly in top of, you know, a city, a town, anything. But uh, the only reason I'm gonna do is because I'm gonna do it really, really early morning. So I'm gonna do it like around, you know, three, two three in the morning when there's nobody around and then I'm gonna proceed to fly the aircraft and see uh, how the night vision cameras they're gonna work so but yeah I see I see why this guy was talking about when you hit the throttle you know it doesn't really climb too fast it's not a rocket well, it works fine. There are no reason to complain. One thing that I saw from a guy that was flying one of the, uh, a 450, but he had this 450 with no FPV equipment, no camera, nothing, just the aircraft itself. Apparently, he only flies line of sight. And he got had the system somehow, you know, his system was working you know, his uh, quad with the E300 was working like a like a rocket. You know, he was even doing loops and flips in the air with it. But even though I know how I know how to do that, I'm not gonna do it with this aircraft. Okay, uh, my flying. Uh, I got 10.5 minutes. And I got 11 11 minutes and 30 seconds so far. I know I'm mostly hovering and not actually flying the aircraft, but my main concern over here is make sure that I get, you know, a decent flying time with this battery. I got a 450 with a GoPro. I use the GoPro as a FPV camera. And with this same battery that I got here, he flies for like 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes. So. The motors that I got that are different. I got Keller motors that are 1130 kV with 9 inch APC, 9 by 4.7 APC props. And I quite is pretty fast. I'm planning to replace those motors and put Sony Sky 12, 50 kV, 2212 in there uh, to make it even faster with the uh, um, APCs uh, um, 9 by. Um, uh, 4.5 uh, MR props with that one because that's the one that I'm gonna use to get crazy with it. Now the the light pole arm is ma making noise. I mean, it's starting to time to land. Okay, so I flew. 
I got pretty much the same flying time that I got with the other aircraft. I got 12 minutes and 57 seconds. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna adjust the 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 timer in here to go off at 10 minutes. So in that way I'm gonna have two and a half minutes res uh, or spare time to get back and land. This aircraft, I didn't build it to go far, far away or anything like that. This thing is mostly to do, you know, you know, fly within a kilometer, you know, like a half a mile. I mean, the video transmitter got the capability to take me even further than that. But I just want to go, I don't want to go that far. I just want to put that 1,000 uh, mini web video transmitter so I can get a good penetration without the need of having a... Uh, um, well, this crazy uh, uh, FPV frequencies that will make you forced to uh, show everything that you have on the aircraft so something doesn't interfere with, some, with something else. You know, like 1.2, 900 megahertz, any of that stuff. I like my 5.8. Okay, so the motors are cold. These motors that didn't broke a sweat or anything, they are completely and totally cold and really impressed. You know, so even if the system got no power, you know, pretty much I got, you know, the a good decent flying time with it. And the motors are cold, you know, so I'm happy. I'm happy. You just did what I wanted I wanted this to do, so I guess that's pretty much it. So, uh, this is like I said, this is my um, Reptile Affit from Good Love Buy. This is the 700 TBL uh, version and it flew like I expected. So, stay tuned for my next video of this aircraft, video number two, and it's going to be a night flight vi uh, video. And you will see the, uh, the night vision cameras at work. This is the same cameras that Ali Shamal used in one of his videos and he flew at night time and it was amazing. I, it, that blew my mind, you know, how great these cameras work. Okay, so please don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and favorite this video. And thanks for watching everybody. Bye.